Okay, now let's begin. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, dear classmates and friends. We are going to learn the following paragraph of the pure conduct together today. When I shave my head, I vow that sentient beings will be forever free from afflictions and achieve ultimate tranquility. Achieve ultimate tranquility. Tranquility means stillness. stillness. As stated earlier in the pure conduct, if all bodhisattvas skillfully apply their minds, then they will attain all kinds of excellent and fine meritorious virtues. Applying their minds skillfully, that is, they can dedicate to the vows according to their wisdom, whether they meet with anything or anybody or any state. All kinds of excellent and fine meritorial virtues, that is, all the questions asked by foremost wisdom Buddhism. How do we make good use of our minds? We have been taught in the obstacle precept suture that the power of vows is equivalent to an autumn. Magic seed sower. The power of vows is equivalent to another, to another magic seed sower. Another magic seed sower, that is, to create oral karma, which is the same as practicing by mouth, or which is the same as saying. That is practiced by the mouth, or which is the same as saying that it is practiced by the mouth. That's to say, that's to say, the pure conduct is practiced by your mouth, by my mouth. How do we apply our minds skillfully? Manjushri Bodhisattva tells us that when we shave up our build and heal, we should make good use of our mind and make a vow to be free from all vexation forever and make a vow to be free from all vexation or affliction forever. How many afflictions do we have? Oh, one hill, one hill is considered one affliction. If one hill is, is considered one affliction, so count how many afflictions are cut off each time. Why do we want to be free from afflictions forever? Because afflictions are dark clouds that cannot be driven away, and afflictions are poisonous snakes. Poisonous, poisonous snakes. Afflictions are poisonous snakes that eat up all our good merits and virtues. At the same time, we, we vow that all social beings can achieve ultimate tranquility. All social beings can achieve ultimate tranquility because when we get rid of afflictions, we can return to the state of a stillness. Stillness means tranquility. And we can reach the state of complete tranquility. That is, we can truly dwell in the self-nature. 
that is, we can truly dwell in the self's nature, live in the self nature, or stay in or stay in the self nature. Then, after making the vows in this way, the cause of karma is created, the seed is formed. And together with the excellent ariser of the condition of the mentor, the result can be rapid to attain. And it is inevitable, and it is inevitable that we will be able to leave all afflictions forever, return to the state of stillness, and truly dwell in the self nature. Why is it when vowing that essential beings will, and not when vowing that I myself will? It is a higher and a more supernatural cause. When vowing that I myself will is only one cause for you. Even, even an automatic seed sower is to sow seeds one by one. But when vowing that essential being's will is that you have created a normal karma of course for all essential beings, and the course has formed seeds, and that Adding the automatic seed sower, you are to sow unlimited seeds automatically at the same time. So you can achieve faster and complete or perfect the universal dedication in Buddhism. Please remember the dedication only for or to or sentient beings is just called dedication. Otherwise, otherwise, it is not called dedication. In addition, this when vowing that all sentient beings will it is good for oneself and all sentient beings. Now speaking, the one who really gets it is yourself. But after you achieve this for yourself, you will then go and let all sentient beings achieve these things according to the power of your vow. When the time comes to teach him and bring him back, into this state of dedicating to the vows and generating this fruit or retribution again, only they can he be accomplished. Only they can he be accomplished. We have already known that the supreme Wisdom, Manjushri Bodhisattva, teaches us the Dharma of making good use of our minds, the Dharma of applying our minds skillfully. Not only is this the case with the Supreme Wisdom, Manjushri Bodhisattva, but also the flower, the flower or dormant sutra also tells us let all Buddha this begin with the great vows. All Buddha this begin with the great vows. And all the actions practiced by Buddhisattva begin with the dedication. And all the dedications pra and all the actions practiced by Buddhisattva begin with the dedication. To dedicate your merit to your vows is the door. Is the door. Without the door of the dedication, 
without the door or the gate of the dedication, we cannot enter the palace hall of Buddhism. We must also be clear at all times that it is a never view to calculate results without cause. It is a never view to calculate results without cause. You must know about it. You must know about it. If we don't have the cause of eternal freedom from afflictions, we will not be able to give up our afflictions. And if we don't have the cause of achieving ultimate tranquility, we will not be able to return to the realm of ultimate, ultimate tranquility. And we will not be able to truly dwell in the self nature. And we will not be able to truly dwell in your self nature, your true self nature. Moreover, we have not eliminated all our obstructions of afflictions and obstructions of having been known. So, when you shave up your build and heal, you may vow that essential beings will be free from afflictions forever and attain ultimate stillness and dwelling and dwelling the true self nature and dwelling your true self nature. That's all for this lesson. Thank you so much indeed for your attention, listening, and a great achievement for me. See you next time. See you soon. Okay, I put down my mic.